When you have a character like Godzilla that has spawned a franchise of over 30 movies, chances are there's going to be a few ideas that never make it past the planning stages. The Volcano Monsters is one of the more unique as it's not only the first Godzilla movie to never be made, but it was also the first attempt for an American Godzilla movie. Though calling it that is giving it a bit much credit as it initially wasn't even going to be a Godzilla movie. In 1956, Godzilla King of the Monsters did financially well in America. Thanks in part to Americanizing the film for a Western audience, like including American actor Raymond Burr into the picture. When it was time to bring the sequel up to America, one of the co-producers on the first film, Harry Ribnick, wanted to do something similar to that of the first, but in a bit of a twist. Instead of including American actors into the picture, why not just take the monster scenes and make a completely different movie out of it? Toho had agreed to this creative decision, greenlighting the project that would be known as the Volcano Monsters. Writers Ed Melchior and Ed Watson were tasked with coming up with an original idea that would involve the monster scenes from the original movie. The following I'm about to read is what they ended up with. It was a peaceful day in Noshiro, Japan, just another day unlike any other. When suddenly, out of nowhere, a massive eruption occurred revealing a cave near one of the mountainsides. American paleontologist Roy Charlie, along with his assistant Marge and a few Japanese scientists, go and explore the newly found cave in hopes of finding some prehistoric fossils. What they found was something only their wildest dreams could have conjured up. Standing before them were two stone giants, an enormous Tyrannosaurus Rex locked in battle with an Ankylosaurus both trapped in a fossilized state. The scientists considered the dinosaurs to be dead and wanted to take them back to San Francisco to get some more information on them. One of the Japanese scientists strongly argued against it and warned them. Do not disturb the monsters of Noshiro. Only death and destruction will come to it. The warning, however, falls on deaf ears as the team prepares the ship to return to America with the dinosaurs. While on their way back, it is somehow discovered that the dinosaurs are indeed still alive. The scientists on board couldn't be more thrilled. This is truly an incredible discovery! Think of all the possibilities we can learn from this! Not just with the dinosaurs, but we may even unlock the secrets of suspended animation itself! One of the sailors named McBain didn't share the same excitement as the rest were feeling. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Knowing these animals were still alive caused McBain to go in a bit of a panic. Geez, am I the only sane person here? We should just throw the damn things overboard before something bad happens. Huh, <laughs> I really ain't getting a good feeling about this. Sure enough, something was going to happen. A violent storm conjures up and leads its way to the ship. The incredible weather loosens the restraints on the Tyrannosaurus, causing it to plummet off board and sink to the bottom of the ocean. The crew had lost what was an amazing discovery for the world. Though not all went bad, as they at least still had the Ankylosaurus, and they indeed do manage to bring it back to San Francisco. A few hours after the crew's return, something strange pops its head out from under the water. It draws closer and closer, until it is revealed to be the Tyrannosaurus from earlier, now free of its imprisonment. <laughs> Shortly after, the second dinosaur releases itself from its stone slumber, and the two begin where they left off thousands of years ago. Roy Charlie hears about what is happening and suffers a serious stroke because of it. The two fought to the death as poor little Chinatown was being crumbled beneath their mighty toes. The fight comes to an end as the T-Rex chomps down on the Ankylosaurus' neck, killing its foe and giving out a mighty roar in victory. the mighty creature makes its way back to the sea, a university was in its path, with scientists trying to come up with a formula to put the dinosaur back in suspended animation. One of the scientists was Marge. McBain arrives in the nick of time to warn them. His warning falls on deaf ears as they were so close to coming up with the formula. McBain knocks Marge out cold and proceeds to carry her out to safety. The others who refuse to listen paid with their lives as the dinosaur crushes them inside the building before heading out to sea. Upon following the creature by boat, they find out that the animal is heading towards a tropical island in the polar regions. This information gives scientists to believe that the dinosaur is a female and that she is heading to the tropics to lay her eggs. 
McBain comes up with an idea in hopes of stopping the creature without killing it. His plan goes into action as Navy soldiers surround a cave where the beast is hiding out in with oil drums. As the monster approaches, one of the soldiers gets trapped beneath an oil drum. McBain, without hesitation, rushes out to save the man. As he's got him, he flings a grenade at one of the drums and starts a chain reaction. The fire surrounds the beast, trapping it as fighter jets fly in and start shooting at the icy mountains, causing them to fall apart on top of the creature. The once mighty Tyrannosaur now lays under a thick mountain of ice, where it can do no more harm. And that was The Volcano Monsters, the very first Lost Godzilla movie. But like I said earlier in the video, it wasn't really going to be a Godzilla movie. You may have noticed throughout I refer to Godzilla and Angaris as dinosaurs rather than themselves. That's because ABPT wanted to make them just regular dinosaurs. I can understand why they wanted to desequify this to King of the Monsters, as at the time Godzilla was not a franchise name yet, and sequels in that era were still kind of experimental. For any of those who have seen Godzilla Raids again, you probably would know where a lot of these monster scenes were going to be rearranged. Toho had slightly modified the suits before shipping them to ABPT so they can make new scenes like the University one for example. As of why this movie didn't get made, well it's simple. ABPT in the middle of production shut down, canceling all their projects including this one. Now I'm going to ask you people what do you think? Do you think this would have been a more successful movie compared to its original? Or do you think this would have been just another sci-fi monster movie flick with nothing special going on for it? Now if you made it to the end here, I just want to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again.